had motion picture experience through the Sonia Henny pictures. Uh, oh yeah. Then how did you then get? Are we into, on? Yeah, I'm sorry. Then how did you uh, really get get into features as an actor? Uh, well, when when um, working in the chorus at 20th Century Fox in, in the Sonia Henny films, I had to join the union. Naturally, there was only one union then. It was just SAG, uh, and that covered extra work and whatever dancers and. So, uh, in as much as that Sonia's job was a seasonal thing, uh, you, you'd tip, uh, we'd rehearse in August, open in September, play three months, come back home, do a film, and then we, you know, that was the, that was the rest, that was the whole job for the, that year. So I started doing extra work at 19 years of age. And 18, 19, so, no, me on 19. And uh, also some dance jobs that were around. Uh, I got, I could, I would go to audition for them just like, you know, everybody else. So that's how I uh, supported myself in, in the in between things. I had not, I had realized during the, the skating times that, that I was a tap dancer and an acrobat, basically, and that helped me a great deal in the skating. But I realized that in in skating, I needed I needed some ballet training because the the similarity be, between skating and, and and ballet is is quite close. So um, I went to a Nico Cherie studio in the, in Hollywood when when we came off a tour, and Nico and Sid had gone off to Europe. And he, he left the studio in charge uh, uh, of, uh, with um, Bert Prival, who was a marvelous uh, premier character dancer uh, for the Monte Carlo Ballet. Mm -hmm. And uh, he now has a school and has for many years out in the Ballet in, in Los Angeles. And I took private lessons from him two hours a day. And boy, did he work me over. Whew. I mean, uh, we became very, very close friends. Marvelous man, and I really, really worked hard with him, and uh, so that I was able to employ uh, more completely dance uh, in in the skating, and then uh, when we opened at the, the um, Center Theater, we opened in uh, winter of '40. And in uh, yeah, 41, 41 uh, came Pearl Harbor, and I, w I remember I was coming down the elevator, all ready to go on for the opening number, matinee, and over the speaker system came the announcement of Pearl Harbor. Holy, <laughs> it, was a, it was a real, real shocker. and. Uh, uh, I then, this was in December, and I was going with a girl from uh, from a show called Panama Hattie, Miriam Franklin then, and uh, we decided to get married. Uh, so we were married December 22nd, and then I enlisted in the, in the Signal Corps uh, uh, on, my on my following March on my birthday. And from that, I was really lucky. Um, I, I, I appeared in a post show out there, the, you know, one of those talent shows. Uh, and um, Ezra Stone and Irving Berlin, and um, yeah, it was Ezra and Irving was canvassing all all the, the various camps, seeing their post talent. And uh, I did some number, I don't know, I rehearsed in the rec hall and, and put together a dance. And <laughs> the following morning, I, uh, I came out in orders, transferred to Camp Upton, Long Island to tour of duty with This Is The Army Company. And uh, we opened the, uh, the following July, July 4th at the Broadway Theater, six months there, 
traveled across the country, made the movie in Hollywood. Then the company was cut down from 350 to 125, 100, 150, I think it was. And then we, well, they were sent overseas, and we were two years overseas. We all did everything. Uh, we, we, we had to, uh, I was a steam winch operator. I was also a 20 millimeter gunner, uh, besides doing the shell, and I was in, in second in command of, uh, of uh, the electrician, electrical department. It's like being with a circus. Yeah. It was marvelous. I mean, I, I don't think in two years uh, I could ever have gotten the theatrical background or theatrical training of uh, uh, that I, 12 years, you know, it is summed up in those two years, you know, a real <coughs> wild experience, you know. Do, do you remember Michael Curtiz's <laughs> film version? I remember him. Uh, I, saw, I, I only saw him a couple of times on the lot when he was there. Uh, he, I mean, he, he directed the picture, but I mean, uh, uh, Leroy Prince was was the one in charge of the musical numbers, and that's really all all we were involved in. But you know, Michael was there, and, and I remember him. He's a, an out and out one of the marvelous characters of all times, as far as the motion picture industry is concerned. I mean, there are more there are more really zany statements quotable from him than like the one um, doing a do, doing a picture on a pier on the beach and there's somewhere in Santa Monica or something. I forgot who the actor actor and actresses, actress were, was. Uh, and they're shooting a full shot near the, near the rail of the pier. And it's a kind of a wide angle, I, I guess, as the story goes. And it's, it's this great moment where they're arguing and fighting and finally they make up and they rush into each other's arms in a big kiss. At that point a whole pile of seagulls went, came up from underneath the pier and just flew up everywhere. I mean just wonderful. And Michael Curtis says, cut, print, let's move in for a close-up and bring the seagulls in one at a time. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. We did a whole series of, of very successful musicals at Warner's. Yeah, and he was most unlikely director for for for, for musicals, really. Of uh, course, uh, in in those days at Warner Brothers, uh, Michael, I mean uh, Leroy Prince, was really held domain over all musical things, and as as it was when I was under contract there. He was he was the, uh, the director of musicals. I mean, of the musical numbers. It, all the billing is always uh, uh, musical numbers staged and directed by Leroy Prince, which was not true. <laughs> the, the, he directed the camera portion of it a great deal. Uh, I mean, most of the time. I mean, he had absolute domain over that. But the musical numbers, um, he would get ideas. He was a great idea man, you know. And then he, ha he had two assistants, a boy and a girl, who created the actual choreography. In, with the dancer, yeah? With the, with the with, you know, with the dancers, whatever. When I was there, I created the choreography for all my, all my numbers. In fact, came up with, you know, most of the ideas for it. You know. And I, I, I worked closely with him on, on most of it. In uh, the West Point story, it's a very frequently revived yeah. musical on, on, on TV. Yeah. Uh, having the opportunity to work with James Cagney. Uh, uh, one of the great joyous moments of my life, yeah. Fantastic man. We became very good friends, and he loved dancing. I mean, he really loved it. And he used to come in when he was going to uh, uh, start a picture, whether, you know, any kind of a picture, like when, when he st uh, uh, was called in to start White Heat. Uh, he was heavy. Because he loves his beer and, 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 and he doesn't do much exercise other than <laughs> what is necessary. But when he, when he, when he must get, wa wanted to get in shape for a picture, he would come into the dance rehearsal hall on the lot and he had a, 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 cut, out, a cut out of, of a, a rubber inner tube that was about, oh, about 10, 10 inches wide. 
and he'd put, slip himself into that. And then he'd just get up there and dance his little heart out in front of the mirror and sweat it up real good. And by the time the picture started, he was down enough to, so he looked what he thought was presentable. Dear man, really a dear man.